is off track with Hinch and Rossi. Hello, guys, and welcome to the Nameless Tuesday episode on Mondays. Um, last week, we didn't cover... Two weeks ago, sorry, we didn't cover episode five of uh, Underneath Indy for several reasons. Um, mainly because we had an Indy 500 to talk about, and uh, people were busy after that. I'm still tired from the Indy and, and yeah, I'm I'm not totally recovered because <laughs> guess what? They decided to add two races after the Indy 500 <laughs> and not give anybody a chance to slow the f- down and have a nap. Yeah. So I'm, um, I'm still in my dry out from the 500. I haven't had anything since. I'm literally wearing the same clothes that I was that I haven't yeah. showered since the 500. <laughs> um, but no, so so we're just we're skipping straight ahead to the finale, which came out on Friday. Uh, I'm sure you watched it. If you didn't, please go check it out on the CW app. And, and they just announced today or yesterday, because this we'll put this out Tuesday, that it will be on Netflix starting like June 16th or something. Exactly. So you don't have to wait a whole year to go on Netflix like we did for season one. If you haven't watched season one, go on Netflix right now, watch season one, and then wait until June, whatever he said, uh, to watch season two, which is pretty exciting. And then hopefully, in the not too distant future, we can announce something about a season three, because that would be pretty, pretty swell, pretty neat. Yeah. You know? Um, All right. So let's get into the episode. How did we feel about the season finale of 100 Days to Season 2. I f- I'm 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 going to be I think I'm going to be kind of rossy on this one like that's such I a didn't love it. I didn't love what it. Did, what didn't you I, love I about thought it? I thought it was okay. I like I enjoyed it. It was fine. It was just like okay. We we continually say and it, it does bear repeating that this show wasn't made for you and I. This show right. wasn't made for like the hardcore fans. That said, I do think whoever's watching this watched the Indy 500, right? Like, I don't think there's, I think the Venn diagram of people who watch the Indy right. 500 or people who watch 100 Days to Indy watched the Indy 500. Right, I see what you're saying. Yes, okay. So I didn't feel like we needed to recap as much of the race because I feel like a lot of people would have seen that. And I would have liked, like, I would have liked a lot more of the stuff that you'd, didn't see if you watched the race. Like I wanted to see what, what do the drivers do in their downtime between like in the, the rain insanity delay sanity of qualifying. And oh. then you have a week off before the race. And I know it's not off, right? You have yeah, media yeah, yeah. responsibilities, sponsor responsibilities, community day, that kind of thing. But that would have been some stuff that like most fans don't get to see. Whereas like, I thought they did a hell of a job recapping everything as quickly and succinctly as they did, but it just felt like I was missing some of this stuff of like the, what the drivers got up to. Yeah. Cause I guess they would have covered qualifying in episode five, right? I, yeah, I would assume. Well, so episode five, no, they didn't really. Episode yeah, five was, so. they covered it Connor and Dixon. Connor and Dixon. So and you- it was fine with qualifying. <laughs> Because like on okay, Dasher, on Dancer, <laughs> sorry, um, I was fine with covering Connor qualifying because like everybody who watched the 500 didn't necessarily watch qualifying. I thought that was fine, but it was just like, but that's the thing. Like, think of all the stuff you got to try to squeeze into a 44 minute episode. Yeah, right? you got to cover qualifying because it's a big deal, and then you got to cover the race. It's funny because I 100 percent agree with your statement that I would love to have known what they did and like show people what drivers do in between qualifying in the race but at the same time i remember having a distinct moment where i'm like man there's only like 22 minutes left in this episode we haven't even got to the race yet and I like would, covering I the mean, race is a big deal but like I, you're right i mean it's not you're right i i don't disagree with you but i also like we, they had we to, need they had to cover to, the race it's the 100 days to indy it's that's why yeah, we're doing so the it's show. 100 days that build up i mean how okay how much and obviously this is the thing, but like, I think I would have ended it on the green flag. Or no, or you just do like a quick, call it a three minute montage of stuff that happened in the race yeah. and then cover a little bit more of the post race. Maybe this, the victory banquet or whatever. But but here's the thing. Okay, I had this weird feeling uh, about, okay, well, I don't, mm, there was a race in Texas a few years ago I don't remember which race, what year it was. I'm 90% sure it was Texas. Maybe it wasn't Texas. Maybe it was Indy. 
I don't know. There was some race where like, there was an objectively bad race. It was a boring, dull race. Mm -hmm. But then something happened and there was a shootout with 10 to go when everybody had new tires and it was a banger finish. And everyone was like, what a great race. Was that Fontana when no, Ray no, no, Hall? No, no, no. no, okay, no. Yeah. It was way after that. That race was good the whole time. But yeah. I, I, I feel like it was a Texas race, but I also feel like it could have been. It doesn't matter. Uh, imagine a race where it's dull for an hour and 40 minutes, but then there's a, a perfect storm of caution and pits and whatever, and everybody's got new tires, and there's just a bang and 10 lap sprint to the finish with crazy passes and side by side racing and all that stuff. I remember, again, even though I don't remember what race it was, I just remember everybody after the race talking about what a great race it was. I'm like, no, 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 no. What a great finish it was, Mm -hmm. is what you mean. It was an objectively bad race, but the finish was great. But it's the last thing you see, so it's all anybody remembers, right? And so, like, I'm watching this episode, and, you know, I love that they, I mean, you had to cover qualifying. It's so important. And, again, I wish we could almost cover it more intense and like talk to drivers more about how scary qualifying is and like what you have to do to put it all out there and explain how hard it is to do four laps and quality trim at that track, whatever. I wish we had a whole episode just on qualifying. And then for the race, yeah, talk more to the families, see a little bit more of the behind the scenes of what the guys are doing, how they prep, how do they spend the four hours in the, you know, of the rain delay. Like that's kind of a unique element that we yeah. have this year. Again, I get why we couldn't, because we still have to tell the story of the race. I say we like I'm involved. I get why it couldn't be done. You have to tell the story of the race. That's still ultimately what this is about. But the the fact they they ended that episode, and I guess that season, so perfectly with that Alan Sir Jr. line, which is still mm-hmm. my favorite mm-hmm. line that you anyone's just ever said, Indian, Indian you means, just yeah. don't know what Indy means. And every time you see it, I get chills and I tear up a little bit because he's tearing get, up. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm just I, like, I, was, well, I watched with it. Hazel and I said it with him as he yeah. said, <laughs> like, yeah. It's the most iconic line, I think, in 500 history. And and then to to also do it, which I think is just so perfect to, to do it with the 365 days to end. Yeah. Exactly. Then it's like a clock (laughs) back. The clock turns, the odometer spins back up to 365. I just, I don't know. I I thought the ending was banging. They covered the race really well. They covered all the emotions, the highs and the lows. Um, Again, I I would have loved to have seen more reaction from some of the family members, but there's only so much time, right? Like it's not a, it's not a criticism. It's just a wish list thing. No, again, and and, and let's be clear, like 12 episodes. Yeah. And I want to be clear, like, I'm not saying that I thought it was bad, right? I'm just like, no, no. We're, we're supposed to be reviewing, like, I'm I'm just giving a pity. I still really enjoyed it. So I, right. I want to start from there. Like, right. it was, you know, I thought, I thought they've done an amazing in, You job. want to start from there. Got it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, no, yeah, it, it was, again, it would have been interesting to see the, a bit of the banquet speeches maybe and like, know what Joseph made the $4.2 million purse or whatever it was, something insane. Yeah. Um, but no, man, it's so cool. And I just, I just hope that one day we get to have a full season show because we've talked about this so many times. The, and I, and I know Alex kind of disagrees on this one. Um, and I look, I love the fact that this show does something so unique, which is like pumping it out in almost real time. Yeah. You know, like that's so hard to do and is very unique. But in other shows that do that, right, um, you're covering like a team or maybe Mm -hmm. a game. And so you only have to cover a couple, like two things. And like you know what to look for. And like you know who you're talking to. Whereas with this, we don't know who the storylines are, like what the story is going to be until it happens. And so you're sort of hoping that you've captured enough to do it. And again, I think they've done an exceptional job for these last two seasons of trying to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but man, how good would it be to be able to just film a s- whole season and then six months later, pull it, put out another season of the show that cover, you know, it's look, it's the drive to survive model. Sure. It's the, it's the full swing model. It's the point break model or break point model point break. I'm just, I'm kind of wondering about that because like, I don't know if I would have, I'm going to watch anyway. Right. Obviously, like yeah. even without us doing these recap things. I'm I'm going to watch anything they put out anyway. And I do think that they do an amazing job. 
um, I don't know if I would have the same poll if it was the 500 last year. I don't think I would have the same investment in it. What do you mean? Oh, sorry. Like, Cause it's not happening real time. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I get what you're saying and it makes complete sense. It's just like part of me is just kind of like, I don't know. I, I like seeing it knowing, Oh yeah, that happened two weeks ago. And like for most of the season I'm watching this, I don't know who's going to win the Indy 500. That's like true. That. Yeah. You, you don't start the show already knowing who won. That's a very good point, actually. I, I put down a, a few notes. Um, I thought it was interesting that they cut the whole thing with Marcus in qualifying, thinking that he was done when he had only done three laps. Yeah, but I also get why, because it didn't end up mattering. Like, if yeah. that was the reason he didn't qualify and he was the guy that went home, yeah, obviously you'd cover that. Yeah. But like, I don't... I, I, I see your point, but again, there's just so many stories to tell. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem, right? No, I, I wasn't saying they should have left it in. I just thought it was interesting because yeah. I was like watching it and I was, oh yeah, they're going to talk about that. And it was like, no, they're not. Yeah. yeah. Um, can't help but notice uh, Mrs. McLaughlin didn't have the uh, the lucky ducks with her on pit lane during the actual race. Is that, I, I wasn't, I didn't look that hard, but like, oh, I uh, can you confirm I mean, he Scott specifically said she had to he hold did. them in her hand. And Both of them. She didn't have them in her hand, so maybe they were in her pocket. Is, he, is she he allowed said to? Hand. He said hand. Mm. So, well, the other thing, I mean, Carly not had saying the it's wine. It's her fault, but like, <laughs> it's her fault. Wow, <laughs> wow. Uh, and they were going to name the baby Tim. Back now. <laughs> yeah, it's. I think I it might be a girl. I think it's gonna be Timberella. But anyway, Tamantha. Um, That's what Tamantha. my dad would call me when my hair would get too long. Right. Um, I don't love the like the level of man crush that I'm starting to have on Scott McLaughlin. Like, I'm totally just, comfortable with the level of man crush. Like, he literally, like, as we're sitting here, he just he just texts me. He just Scott you, McGla- Scott can McLaughlin. You give, can you give him my number? Uh, no. But did you text him to wish him a happy birthday? <laughs> no, because I don't have his number. Did you DM him to wish him a happy birthday? No, because he doesn't tweet respond him? to my DMs. How about did you just tweet him? Just tweet him. He loves Twitter. He's all over X. It's the first yeah. and last time I'll ever refer to Twitter as X because it's yeah. I didn't dumb. love that either. Um, no, but Carly had the line of the day for me, which was when the producer asked her, "Like, is it harder watching when you're pregnant?" Indicating <laughs> or insinuating that, like, oh, now that you have like another life and like a child, is it like harder to watch your husband go out there and, and risk his safety to go race cars? And she was like, "Yeah, no, it's way harder doing this sober." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes, that's the honest answer everybody wanted to hear. I love that. I could not imagine what Becky would have had to have done at a racetrack if she was not allowed to be three Pinot Grigios deep at all times. Neither can I. It sounds awful. <laughs> well, you've literally never done that. You've never been at a racetrack <laughs> and not been at least three drinks down. So, uh, no, there's like at least two or three minutes every time I get there in the morning. Like, right. Yeah. Well, you're yeah. getting the first Walking two down. down. Yeah. You're not yet. Yeah. No, you don't have a mimosa before you get to the track. <laughs> Maybe a Bloody uh, Mary. I don't know. Uh, no, I did think, I thought everybody did a great job. I thought the pit with Flavor Flav in the bus, getting every, all the, the opponents to s- yell willpower with yeah. them was great. <laughs> that uh, was good. I remembered a story from off track when they were they were talking to Will Power in the bus and they asked him, do you remember what you said after you won the Indy 500? And yeah, he yeah, immediately yeah. repeated it. And I don't yeah. know, you, you could tell me after if I need to cut this, but we interviewed Will shortly after he won the 500. And I, I had tried to get that audio. I, I went to NBC and I asked if I could use that audio. And they were like, ooh, check with, Penske first and I went to Penske and they just said like under absolute under no circumstances are you ever allowed to have that audio and I was like okay fair enough I guess that's what I expected but and then we got him on the show and he said yeah you remember what you said after you won the 500 and he just goes oh yeah show me respect mother 
and yeah. just immediately said it into our microphones. And I just remember the look on the face of the PR person for Penske, like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but also probably pretty pissed at us because we were told ex- like explicitly we're never going to get the radio. It's like, all right, we'll just recreate it then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll get him to say it on our microphone. <laughs> right. Everybody already heard him say it on TV. You probably should have just let us have that because now he said it again. Yeah. <laughs> and that just uh that just made me smile. <laughs> I also like I also love when Will was chatting to uh Polo and he was like, Oh yeah, no, you guys aren't as fast because you took all those cheater parts off your car. And Polo's like, <laughs> Wait, what? Like, yeah, Polo no, did not realize he was kidding. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's like He's like, yeah, they took him off because you know, otherwise they're going to catch you. And then he goes, yeah, but they did catch you. <laughs> <laughs> See, okay, that was great. I would have loved a lot more of that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> like, yeah. Pelo's like, Pelo's one of those sleeper sense of humor guys because he's like so buttoned up and his interviews are so like polished and perfect. And he's always smiling. He can crack a little joke, but like you, he's got some like serious wit to a man. Like he's a smart guy and he's got some really good <laughs> comedic chops. And that was a, that was a nice little example of that. But yeah, just chilling yeah. around the bus lot. It would have been fun to see kind of more of that interaction. Go see like Colton and, and Kyle and Marco going fishing down in the pond and mm-hmm. what life's like in the speedway. And it's uh, what were guys doing Saturday night before the race? Yeah. I, I mean, it's, and again, I I do think they did a very good job. I just like, I want to see the stuff that you wouldn't usually get to see. Although yeah. it didn't, it did make me realize nobody really pranked anybody in the bus lot this year. No, it was, yeah, decidedly. I think because, honestly, I think because the first day got rained out, yeah. everybody was just really anxious all month. And nobody was like, I don't think anybody wanted to take that task on because everybody felt like they were behind on stuff and just didn't want to waste any time or energy on something else. I just assumed it's because like everybody's racing each other a lot harder and meaner this year. <laughs> so maybe there's less of a sense of humor, but <laughs> nah, <laughs> no, not, not that. It. All right. That's not it. But you're right. Uh, there was a, an annoying lack of that. And I feel like Alex was talking a big game about how many cool ideas he had and he'd already had yeah. three lined up and just nothing was produced. So I'm calling his bluff on that one. Somebody better step it up next year. Actually, I've got one that I've been kind of sitting on for a few years that the, the year I thought of it, I didn't want to do it mainly because I didn't want to spend the money that was involved. And this year I thought Alex had a good one sorted, so I didn't do anything. But like, I'm just going to commit to spending the money on this one and I think it'll be good. I think it'll be fun. But uh, you're going to have to wait quite a while it, now. Previewing it earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, if I start <laughs> saving now, it won't be as as hard when when it happens. <laughs> uh, everybody re-download this podcast a few times. Help James get a little bit of money for this yeah. prank. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to sponsor the show, please call SiriusXM. Do some ads on there. That'd be great. An ad buy would be terrific. Yeah. Uh, small company, big company, family owned company, doesn't matter. Whatever your needs are. Honestly, please you could just pat McAfee it. Send us the money first, figure out what the company is later. I love that. I love that. <laughs> so many things I respect about Pat. Um, yeah. So that is that is checkered flag on season two of uh Hundred Days to Indy, to use a corny racing pun. But again, I uh you know, obviously I I'm involved in the show. I get to hang with the the guys and girls that make this no, thing. I'm on TV. Look at me. Like I like my entire job is on TV, Tim. This is mm-hmm. not a look at me. I have a job. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. That's classic. <laughs> um I don't know what I was saying. Oh, <laughs> you suck. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to, I was just saying how uh, the effort that goes into this show is phenomenal. Yes. Everybody that, that works with, uh, works with the group, um, you know, whether it's Keith or Adam or Pat, you know, and, and ev- everyone, John, everyone involved um, that I worked with on a regular basis. And you guys saw walking around the tracks and everybody, you know, back at base camp editing and putting this whole thing together. It was a monumental task to, to do a show like this. And I applaud them for pulling it off yet again for another year. Uh, sincerely hope that you guys all enjoyed it. And 
yeah, I hope that I hope that the fact that it's coming out, you know, on Netflix a little bit earlier this time helps let more people see it. Um, and I hope that we get a third season. It's my personal opinion. Yeah. Mainly just you want to be on TV more. No, no, I'm actually okay with the amount that I'm on TV. I could take it or leave it. Um, cause it is a lot, <laughs> Tim. It's a lot that I, it's like an exceptional amount. Um, I qualify <sighs> for SAG. How about that? That's pretty cool. That is kind of cool. Isn't that weird? How come yeah. somebody that's not acting can qualify for SAG? Probably because they merged with AFTRA, so it's SAG AFTRA. That is definitely going to be part of it. Yeah. yeah, SAG insurance is pretty neat. Wouldn't know. No, I know. That's why I said <laughs> it. But I'm sure you've heard great things from yeah. your working friends in town. They're like, it's the, the headquarters like two blocks that way, so I can go pick up your card if you need me to go grab it. <laughs> oh no, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to join. I just, I'm just i eligible. Uh, I have no interest in joining. <laughs> but um, all right. Anything else? Any final thoughts, Tim? I'm ready to go to bed. It is three. Oh, you meant about the show? I'm sorry. No, yeah, no, I'm good. It's three <laughs> in the afternoon where you are. I'm pulling an all day, or you know, no nap. I'm exhausted. We just blew right through nap time. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, same. I was very tired today and I blew through nap time, but I'm kind of okay with that because that means I can go to, I can justify going to bed at like 8.30 and oh, I'll definitely sleep the whole way through, tonight. hopefully. Yeah. Do All that. right. Well, that's uh, time to get back to our regular Tuesdays. Oh God, I feel so bad for you guys. It was great when we actually had something ahead of time that we knew we were going to talk about and now we don't. So once again, send us a send us a message on, uh, on well, just call on Twitter. Tim. Call Tim. His phone number. <laughs> um, and let us know what you want to hear about on the Tuesday episodes. We love you. We appreciate you. And as you will hear, I'm going to say it again now, even though you're going to hear it on the Thursday episode, just thanks for listening because we're shocked at how many people actually listen and we do genuinely appreciate you guys. This has been Off Track with Hinch and Rossi. Off Track is part of the Sirius XM Sports Podcast Network. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, please give us a five-star rating and leave a review. Subscribe today wherever you stream your podcasts. We're at Ask Off Track on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to follow us on Twitter individually, I'm at Hinchtown. He's Alexander Rossi. And if you want to follow Tim, though we have no idea why you would, he's at the Tim Durham on Twitter. Follow us on YouTube and subscribe to our channel for exclusive video content. Off Track is produced by Tim Durham. And by that, we mean Tim.